All right, so this video is going to cover this um, 2011 AP Computer Science Principles um, sound class problem. Now, um, this is going to look a little bit different again because the AP class is all in Java, but we can still do this in Python and it will work out just fine, okay? So it says digital sounds can be represented as an array of integer values. For this question, you will write two unrelated methods of the sound class. A partial declaration of the sound class is shown below. Okay, now it's hard to see, but this is samples and it's an array. So in uh, Python, it's going to be a list. Uh, this is a limit amplitude uh, method, but it's going to be a function in uh, Python and we'll pass in the limit. And this one is going to trim silence from the beginning. So um, I'm just going to go down real quick because some of that stuff isn't important. It's better just to read this. So the volume of a sound depends on the amplitude of which uh, of each value in the sound. The amplitude of a value is its absolute value. For example, the amplitude of negative 2300 is 2300 and the amplitude of 4000 is 4000. Write the method limit amplitude that will change any value that has an amplitude greater than the given limit. Okay, so um, so let's say 2000 is passed into the limit amplitude function. Okay, so for instance, negative 4000 would be negative 2000. Uh, negative 2300 would be 2000, 2532 would be 2000, and then 2030 would be 2000, and 3223 would be 2000. So it's either, and if it's a negative number that's less than negative 2000, it's going to be negative 2000, and if it's greater than 2000, it's going to be 2000, all right? So... I've got this main sound set up and I am just going to use what they have. Okay, so I'll say samples is equal to uh, 40, 25, 32, 17, uh, negative 2300, negative 17, negative 4000. Um, 2,000, and I forgot to put the last one in, 32, 23, okay, so there's samples. Um, so I'm going to print samples and print number changed and this is going to be our limit amplitude function and we're just going to hard code 2000 into it to pass that in okay and then after it we will print the samples again to make sure that these changed all right because right here it's just going to print up that right so we'll define limit amplitude and we need to accept the limit. Okay, that'll be 2000. All right, so I'm defining samples as global because I'm going to use it in here and I'm using it outside here. So um, we'll say. Uh, num changed equals zero so this is so actually and I forgot to do this changes those values in the sound um, that have an amplitude greater than the limit 
Um, values greater than limit are changed to limit. Values less than negative limit are changed to negative limit. Um, and then we will return the number of values in the sound that has changed. So that's where this num change come from. So it will be one, two, three, four, five that will change, okay? So we want to have that. So we'll have an i equals zero. And while i is less than the length of samples, we'll run through every single um, element of samples to check it. If the samples at position i are less than the negative limit, then we'll assign the samples at that position to i. So this one right here would be changed to negative 2,000. So this is going to be equals negative limit. So that would change. So and index, I always forget to do this, but this is really important until you start getting good at this stuff to always put the index position. So there's 14 entries here. Remember, the this would be 13, but it's always minus one for the end one. So 14 minus one is 13. Is 13. So 13 is the last index position. Okay. So then, um, then we need to do num um, num changed num changed equals num changed plus one. And then we just do the same thing for if it's greater than the positive limit. So if the samples at position i is greater than the limit, okay, the samples at position i equals the limit, and the num changed equals num changed plus 1. And then we just do i equals i plus 1 to go through the next one, and then the next, and it goes all the way to the end. Okay. Then when we're done with that, we'll return num changed. Okay. Now, the hardest thing when I wrote this is uh, making sure your global variables in there. I did all this without global, and it kept getting here. Let me, uh, should be getting an error here. Let's look at it. Oh, no. No, never mind then. I guess we don't need that. Oh, oh well. I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of that. Notice there's one that's changed, two that's changed, three that's changed, four, and then five that changed. And so the number changed is five. So that's good. We're good to go on that. Okay, next up, let's see what B is. Recorded sound often begins with silence. Silence is a sound. Silence in a sound is represented by a value of zero. Write the methods trim silence from beginning that removes the silence from the beginning of a sound. To remove starting silence and a new array of values is created that contain, okay, a new array is created. Um, a new array of values is created that contains the same values of the original samples array in the same order but without the leading zeros. The instance variable samples is updated to refer to the new array. For example, suppose the instance variable samples refers to... All right, so then we would basically get rid of index position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, zero, one, two, and three, and start here and plug all this into here. Trim science from the beginning has been called. The instance variable samples will refer to the following array. Okay, all right, cool. So define our what? trim silence from beginning and we're going to do another samples here. Do 
do this real quick. So, do samples two equal to zero comma zero comma. Seven. Sorry, I have it written down. I printed this out because it's easier for me to read on paper. Uh, 32, 37, 29, 0, 0. And we'll do the same thing here. Only this is going to be trim silence from trim silence from beginning. Okay. Just make sure it's spelled the same. Okay, so we are going to do a new samples to now we're gonna we want to count up how many zeros there are at the very beginning. So we'll do while while samples to while samples to at position i is equal to zero, then we will do uh, i equals i plus one. Okay. So that would give us, you know, one, two, three, four. Okay. So i would be four. So now we're going to do that will give us where we want to start our, our our position right here. So again, let's do our index. Okay. So we'll start at four because I counts up to four. Now we want to go to a, another value x, set that to zero, and we'll say while x is less than the length of our samples two minus i. Okay, so what do we have here? 15 minus four is going to give us a 11 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 actually sorry 16 minus 4 would be 12 sorry uh, so that's going to give us 12 so we want to run through this 12 times okay we'll say mm, let me think here Our new samples is right here. We'll say um, new samples dot append whatever is that samples two, and then we want to do x plus i because <coughs> this is going to be four, right? So we want to start at zero, and then what's that position four in samples two? It's fourteen. So fourteen will be appended on to the new samples. Okay, and then we can do x plus x, x, sorry, equals x plus 1. And then we'll just do samples 2 equals new samples and write over 
right over the old old stuff and then it will get rid of that and then I'll reassign it to this. I believe that will work. So again, this is going to be 4. I is 4 after we run this because it's going to run 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and we'll start at x is 0. 0 plus 4 is going to start off at position 4 four right here, which is negative 14. So we're going to append negative 14 into the new samples. Add 1. Um, x will become 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. So we plug 0 on to here and append it to new samples. And it will run it all the way to the end. And then we'll reassign this. So I think I have everything here. Let's hope. Uh, no. Easy fix. Let's try that again. Uh, okay. This is where I've got to do my uh, do global. Yeah, global samples too. Sorry, global. New samples is not defined. Oh, wait, new samples too. Object is not callable. Let's see this real quick. The object is not callable. Let me see balls done a pen. All right, I made a really dumb error. So with lists, you need square braces around it. That will fix it. All right, so we start off with that. And then we remove the beginning numbers, okay? All right, so next up, we are going to do this is going to be main, mean, median, and mode. Notepad. We might need a notepad here. All right, so. This can actually be a really easy one, or it can kind of be a really hard one. It kind of depends. All right, so I think here. All right, so I'm going to create a main. So mean, median mode, all right? We'll call main, and inside main, we'll define main, the, the method. So I'm gonna do numbers. Numbers one is gonna be equal to one, one, four, three, eight, nine, ten, and four. So just some things about this, if you add them together, the uh, total is 39. And if you divide that by 7, you would get 5.5, 5, 5, uh, 5.5714, okay. And if you were to sort this, you would get 
one, three, four, four, eight, nine, ten. And the median would be four. And the mode would be four. Mode would be four. Then we'll do numbers two. And we're going to have 10, 1, 4, 9, 8, and 3. 10, 1, 4, 9, 8, and 3. And if we were to do the same kind of thing, and I've obviously already calculated this, so um, total is 35. So took 35 divided by 6, you would get 5.8. 3333 three, 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 repeating for our um, <coughs> for our average put in the Okay, there's a reason this has seven in a uh, seven uh, the length of seven and this is the length of six okay so seven and six are the lengths okay um, if I were to sort this I would get what one three four um, eight nine and ten uh, and then what the median the median is six because it's going to take these middle two numbers and divide them out. So four plus eight is 12 divided by two is six. And most used, um, I have to look at that. It's probably just going to be the first one because it's the only one used. So we got to test that though. Okay. So print. mean one numbers numbers one okay and then we'll have what mean one numbers one Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to show you different ways to calculate this stuff. Median 1, median 1. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So be numbers two, numbers two. Media numbers one. Should be media numbers two. Median one, two, one, two, one, two.
so that calls that. Now, all right, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna test each one, so I got rid of those for now, okay? So that shouldn't be a problem. All right, median or mean is always the easiest because it's just the average. So two ways that you could do this that I'm gonna demonstrate with different types of loops. So I could say define mean one, pass in the numbers. Okay, I'd say I equals zero, total equals zero, while I is less than the length of our numbers. Okay, we would say total equals total plus our numbers at position i. Then we gotta do i equals i plus one. And then we can what return the total divided by the length of our numbers. Okay. That should be easy. We've already done this before in other um, videos. I equals zero, total equals zero. Now this, this first one used the while loop. I'm gonna show you the for each loop real quick. So we'll say, I don't know, four X in numbers, total equals total plus X. And then um, I don't know I equals I plus one that'll give you the number of times it runs through this and then you can return the total divided by I okay so if I run that let's see what we get get an error what's the error yeah. let me see on all of them so I don't hit that error every single time that's the problem with copy and paste it's very nice but if you make a mistake on one and you copy it and then you get mistakes on all of them okay run that okay so the different type work and so you know we came up with roughly what I had up here that I already previously calculated okay so those both work um, you know I'm kind of old school so I like this while loop right here better it, it just makes more sense to me I mean I understand how to do for each loops um, you know you don't run into issues with with certain things with for each loop so you don't even need an i here what you could just do is uh you could do the same thing length of numbers okay so that's actually the power of this for loop stuff is that you don't need an if you're not using the the index position you don't really need it so it saves you a line of code and it prevents you from creating errors with your i equals i plus one type stuff because people will forget that so i don't know the for for each loop probably use it when you can okay so that's tested and we know that works all right so median is the hard one well there's two different ways to do it i'm gonna show you guys the easy way uh and then the hard way, all right. So this would be numbers. All right, so median you have to sort because you're you're trying to find the um, middle value and you have to sort this first, okay? So we'll say median equals zero. Um, and remember, if it's an even number, um, So, like, if, it, if it's an odd number, 
you can take those first three, those last three, and you know that's the, the middle. But if it's like this one where it's an even number, you have to divide. So you have to be able to figure out if it's even or odd, okay? To figure out the middle number. So I'm going to do something called value equals int and then the length of numbers divided by 2. Notice I cast it as an int because I, I want it to be like this is 7, right? 7 divided by 2 as an integer is 3. It's not 3.5. I'm casting as an int. So this would give me 3. So 0, 1, 2, 3. That's going to be important because I'm going to take that value as the middle. Okay, but for this one, it's six. Six divided by um, two is three. So zero, zero, one, two, three, and then I'm gonna have to do th the middle value minus one to get that one to the four and the eight. Okay, because again, this is zero, one, two, index position three is right here, um, and then we're gonna have to go back one. So that that middle value right here is gonna mean something. Okay, this is going to be. No. Yeah. Okay, so this is the easy way to do it. Numbers dot sort. <laughs> it sorts it for you automatically. Okay. So if um, the length of numbers uh, modulus two equals zero, meaning it's an even number, then we'll do median equals our numbers at the value minus one remember it's this would be even so it's going to be three right here three minus one is going to give us this four right here right so plus the numbers at values so this would give us the um, position two right here and this would give us the position three and then we'll just divide it by two else if it's an odd number then we just say median equals numbers at the value position okay which would be three so right here is zero one two three okay now the problem with Python in my mind is that, especially for newcomers, is that a lot of that was too easy for you. And you're not, you know, once you have the tools down, you, you probably, you know, will just use it. But, you know, I had to learn how to sort the old fashioned way. So this is median two where I'm, I'm sorting the old fashioned way, okay? So I'll show you how to do that here. So in many ways, Python, I think, does a disservice to new programmers because you should um, know how to sort, especially if, you know, you're in a language that doesn't have a dot sort method, you know. So while i is less than the length of numbers, okay, we're going to say x equals i plus 1. Because what we're going to do, i is 0, 0 plus 1. So we're going we're gonna to take this number at position 0 and compare it to what's at position 1. That's where our x is. It's going to start at 1. And so then we'll run through all of them. We'll say while x is less than the length of our numbers. Okay. So this is less than, or so x would be position 1, right? So at position 1 is 1 less than the length, or sorry, yes it is. And so then we're going to say if the what numbers at position i are greater than what's at the numbers at position x, which they're not, that at what's at position zero is not greater than what's at position x at one. They're not, okay? But if they were, then we would have to do a temporary value. Temp equals numbers at position i, okay? And so, like, uh, it, let's say we were comparing these two. Let uh, 
this is greater than this. So now, um, I think here, we would store this value in our temp, okay? So we'd store four in our temp right here, and maybe it's best to do this one. Let's say we start off at zero, is what's at zero, 10, greater than what's at position one, one, yes. So our temp value is at position zero, it's gonna be 10, okay? So then numbers, uh, at position I is going to be numbers at position X. So what we'll do is we'll say what's at position one right here is now equal to what's at position zero. So at position zero, this would be this would be one, and this would still be one right here, okay? Uh, but we still have ten stored in temp. So now we need to swap them. So now we got to say numbers at position X, which is position one, is going to equal our temp value, okay? And then we do X equals X plus one. And that would, and then we go to the next one. So then we, so those would be swapped. So this would be one and 10, okay? And then, you know, X would add one to it. I is still in position zero. But if we go through this one and 10 right here, is there anything else in this list that's gonna be less than one? Nope, so then um, we would run through all those and then this would be done and then we have to do i equals i plus one, okay? And then just to check our new numbers, And then we do numbers right here. We're gonna print them, okay? Just to test this real quick, this is what I'm gonna do. Yeah. All right, so if I run this, let's see what happens. Uh, values, okay, it should just be value. Value. That's an easy fix. Let's try that again. Okay, so now we do this new number, one, three, four, four, eight, nine, ten, one, three, four, eight, nine, ten, okay? So we know that works, okay? Um, this is a good piece of code right here. You might wanna study it, okay? Um, there's a lot going on with loops, nested loops, and then changing values and sorting them. So that's a good algorithm. You probably, you know, if you just started this semester, I wouldn't expect you be able to write that right away, but I would spend some time looking at that and understanding what's going on there. If you can write that, you can, you know, most code you're gonna be able to figure out. Okay, so next up, if the length, so once we have it sorted, because we're up here all we did was, so you know, this right here does this code right here, all right? Once we sort it, then we do the same thing right here, right? Just uh, copy and paste this right here. All right, so return the median. So the median is six and six for both of these. So uh, the median of this one shouldn't be six. Oh, never mind. It's four right here. Four and then six, four. Okay. Let me uh, let me do that. That will fix that. So number one is four four, uh, six, and six, okay? All right, last one. And this video is getting long. Usually I'd break this up into two different videos, but I don't know, I haven't done that for the Python videos. I've just put all, two, you know, two kind of longer programs in one video. So we'll define mode one. And let's see here. I'm just, you could do this, the, um, well, no, 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 never mind. We'll just do this. So we'll just say numbers and 
me see this. I think there's only just one mode. I'm not writing two different methods for it. So it's just uh, mode one for both of them. Okay. So the one that's the most used, you got to figure out, you know, you know, which one. So I go through this one and I got to check to see, you know, is it used again in here? And then I got to go to this one and then see if it's used again in here, which it is. So that would be, you know, two. So um, four would be the most used in that one. So I'm going to say mode equals zero, I equals zero. And then we'll do like a max count equals zero to count it up. And we'll do like a while i is less than the length of our numbers. X is going to be equal to zero. Count is going to be equal to zero. So you need a running count and then you need a max count. Okay. And then we'll do while X is less than the length of numbers if the numbers at i are equal to the numbers at x okay we'll say count equals count uh plus one so is what at, what's at zero for i and zero for x equal yep so it's so one shows up one time in the list okay that's all that's doing and then we do x equals x plus one and it's going to then run through and check to see you know is what's at at zero for i is that what's equal to count at or x at one so x would be one, so is one equal to, sorry, the index position x is, is one, is what's at index position zero, which is one equal to what's at index position one. No, they're not, so then we'd add one to x, and then we would compare one to three, and they're not equal, and then so one to eight, one to nine, okay? So once we get all that done, and we run through one one iter one iteration of all the comparing what's at zero to all of them then what we do is we say if the count is greater than the max count which first time through the count I any mean, if there's a number in here which there is one is that is the count which is one greater than the max count max count zero yes so then we do the mode is equal to the numbers at position i in the max count equals the, the new count okay and then we do i equals i plus one then we return the mode this is also a pretty difficult algorithm to come up with okay this is going to take longer than probably a semester for you to write out and kind of understand by hand. You'll probably want to watch that and just kind of think through it. So now I would be one, all right? So then we would go on and I is one, right? Which is at position four. X goes back to zero, count goes back to zero. Is zero less than the numbers? Yes. The length of the numbers? Yes. And so is what's at position i which is one is that equal to what's at position one or at uh, what's at position zero uh and this needs to be equals equals that would screw things up is is that is they're not equal so they would skip it and x would become one is what's at position one with i equal to what's at position one with x yes so count would then be one and we go on and x would be 2. So then you compare what's at position 1 to what's at position 2. Are they equal? Nope. So x becomes 3. Now you're comparing what's at position 1 to 3. They're not equal. Add another one. So x becomes 4. Is what's at position 1 equal to what's at position 4? Nope. Add 1 to x. It's now 5. Um, is what's at position 1 equal to what's at position 5? No. 
and then we go add another one that would be six is what's a position one equal to what's a position six yes so then count would be two now okay and you would add another one to and, it, and this would become seven there's nothing in position set or sorry seven is not less than the length so that while loops done we come down here count is two two is greater than the previous max count of one so then we need uh, what's up position I is four so the new mode is four and count is two and then we go to position two right here with I and do it over and over again so run that uh, mode is four and then for this one it's one and it's only one because it's the default value it's the first one that comes through okay I think that's how mode works if they're all different numbers then you just choose the first one so at least that's how I did it so anyway this video is done um, the meeting and mode are definitely more advanced um, and if you can work through those nested loops you'll be doing really really well in here and um, you'll be ready to go on to you know bigger and more and more difficult things in programming so it's definitely not going to be used I don't think in any of the the programs but knowing how to do it is really important if you kinda wanna move forward and become a programmer later in life so anyway this video is done